Believe it or not, you're not entirely the one to blame for your bad habits. It's your brain. Your reward system is what's messed up. Your brain is what's telling you to continue doing these habits over and over and over again. Do you know why? Because habits are simply our brain's mechanism to free up space to learn new things. Our brain goes into autopilot. That's why we don't need to tell ourselves to go brush our teeth or to make our bed in the morning. Having a habit in our life requires a lot less thought. So if you have a bad habit in your life and you don't really know where it came from, don't feel ashamed. We all go through periods in life where we keep falling back into the same patterns and we want to break these habits and become the best version of ourselves, but we don't really know where to start. Trust me, it's nothing to feel shameful about, which is why in today's episode, I'm going to be giving you guys a comprehensive guide on how to hack your brain's reward system and actually get rid of those bad habits that you don't want in your life anymore. If you have been wanting to stop relying on random sparks of motivation or guilting yourself into doing something to get yourself out of a habit, this is the video for you. What's going on? on everyone my name is natalie etched and this is the improvement for imbeciles podcast where i share ways in which i'm getting my shit together so that you can get your shit together i'm not going to ramble on any longer you guys know to like the video if you actually enjoy these tips but i'll wait until the end to remind you to like the video because it helps me with the algorithm okay but i think a lot of us have this question of what really makes certain habits stick over others why is it so hard to get up and go to the gym than it is to just sit and lay in bed even though we're well aware that obviously going Going to the gym in the morning and doing the things we need to do is going to make us a better person, sometimes it's really hard to get that motivation to really get ourselves going. There is a logical explanation for this and it's the reward system in your brain. Before we get into all of these tips and tricks on how to hack your brain's reward system, we really need to explore how the reward system works. And it's pretty straightforward. It starts with a trigger and this is a thing that makes you want to do the habit. For example, let's say brushing your teeth, right? The trigger is the sensation in your mouth when you don't brush your teeth. You feel gross, you have bad breath, it's just not a pleasant experience, you have plaque on your teeth, and behind that trigger is the knowledge that, oh, I'm gonna get a cavity or I'm gonna get gum disease if I don't brush my teeth. And while obviously we don't want cavities, if we didn't have the physical sensation in our mouth of, you know, the plaque buildup and the gross feeling and just being able to taste your breath, if you didn't have that experience, you wouldn't feel as much of a need to go brush your teeth because nothing necessarily changes from when you do and when you don't. We then do the behavior, right? And so you're brushing your teeth, you have the experience of what it feels like to brush your teeth. Your mouth feels clean, your breath smells better. All of these things add to the experience that trigger the reward. And this reward is a surge of dopamine in your brain. Now, after a while, obviously we don't feel any dopamine. We don't feel us being like ecstatic when we brush our teeth. That's just what happens initially to form the habit. So when you were younger, that reward was most likely your parent telling you good job and maybe telling you a bedtime story. And that's what formed the habit now where you don't have to think about brushing your teeth. Honestly, it's not even a positive experience. It's just a neutral experience. It's just something you do on a day-to-day basis. One thing I need you guys to understand is the behavior that we perceive as having a higher reward value is always what we choose on a biological level. We are wired this way. For example, our brain will always think high calorie foods are perceptually more rewarding because they taste better better, they have a better experience, but deep, deep down, we don't need to survive only the next day. Our brain is only thinking of survival. It's not thinking of the fact that we want to lose weight. So to change an unwanted behavior, you can't just focus on the habit itself and how bad it is for you. You have to focus on the experience surrounding that reward. Because oftentimes, we don't really experience the things that are habitual to us. It's just a neutral experience. We're just used to doing it for so long over and over and over again that not doing it causes us a physical withdrawal response in our bodies. If you're wanting to break a bad habit, you need to create a physical body response that triggers your brain into saying, this reward isn't what it actually seems to be. You need to completely rewire your reward center into believing that this habit isn't actually as good for you as you thought it was, and you need to replace it with something else. This is why your awareness that the consequences outweigh the benefits oftentimes isn't enough, because you're not including the experience surrounding this reward. In other 
other words, that's exactly why smokers, despite the fact that they know it's bad for them, they know it's gonna cause them cancer, they continue to smoke because they don't care, okay? They know it's bad for them. They just need to create a physical bodily response and a negative attachment to this experience because all of their experiences up until this point have been mostly positive. I'm gonna use the example of vaping. A lot of the times people start vaping when they're maybe in high school and it gave them almost a sense of community, right? You start vaping to look cool in front of other people because that's just what kids do. So off the bat, you naturally have all of these chemicals going to your brain that's telling you to continue doing this habit. However, as you grow up and get into the real world, you realize that this vape is actually not doing that much for you, but you still continue to do it. That's because you have a positive attachment and let's also not forget the fact that it is an addictive chemical. There's no way around things being hard. I know you might have clicked on this video and wanted it to be like this easy thing where you just hack your brain's reward system. No. Changing your bad habits will always require willpower. There's no way around that. But what I will say is if you can create a negative attachment to this bad habit, a good example is if you vape and you don't want to vape anymore, you need to create a physical response that you can focus on that you don't like about vaping, right? This could be the fact that you always have to vape out of a burnt coil or something like that. Like, make it a not pleasant experience for you. Make it inconvenient for you to have to go out of your way in order to get your fix. You must devalue the experience of this bad habit so much that its replacement, that's not really that great of a habit, it's not something you want to do, is a better solution than continuing to do something that's detrimental to you. When you know something is a bad habit and you go back to it, you need to sit in the fact that you went back to that thing. You need to look in the mirror. That is your punishment. For example, if you went to the gym for a couple of weeks and you started to do really good and then you fell off, your punishment is how you feel. Your punishment is you looking in the mirror. Feel those emotions. Because the more that you can create a negative experience surrounding this habit, the easier the habit is to break. Our brains get a little bit confused because we take a habit that used to be good, that used to be fun, for example, vaping, right? And it numbs out the experience. We're on autopilot when we do it. Therefore, we actually forget about the experience as a whole. Again, habits are formed in order to free up our brain to learn new things. Another thing if you actually want to get yourself out of a bad habit, embarrassment works. We all have egos, okay? So if this habit starts hurting your ego and you feel embarrassed, an example would be, you know, telling your friends, hey, bully me if I pick up a vape, you know? Like, if you have people in your life who will embarrass you in a good way, ask them to do that or just embarrass yourself. Because if something we continue to do over and over and over again gets questioned by other people or, you know, we start being embarrassed by it, we'll quickly change our ways. And yeah, it isn't the nicest way to go about it, but we're talking about breaking habits here. We're not talking about, you know, having compassion for ourselves. No, like, like, we don't want to have compassion for this side of ourselves. We want to become a better version of ourselves. And sometimes that does require being a little bit harsh on ourselves and being like, this is tacky. This is corny. I don't want this habit anymore. Not being disciplined makes you ugly. Not being devoted to yourself and your benefit and your health and your well-being is ugly. Would you rather continue to do what you're doing, continue the bad habit and feel like shit with momentary feelings of happiness? Or feel like shit for a little bit, but then feel way better exponentially for the rest of your life? Another thing, if you're really trying to break a habit, write down the purpose to why you're trying to break the habit. Because oftentimes when we want to go back to something, we need to remind ourselves of the purpose of why we wanted to stop doing it in the first place. Our brain loves to pull tricks on us. Our brain loves to glorify the past. It wasn't that bad. Yes, it was. <laughs> yes, it was. Like you need to tell yourself these things because doing something over and over and over again and expecting different results is insanity. And if you're watching this video and you're waiting on the right time. There is no right time. You can't wait on motivation. You can't wait on the right time. It's never going to feel right. It's never going to feel right to change your life. It's just going to be something you have to do. Change is scary and that's valid. I understand what it feels like to not want to change a certain habit you're doing despite the fact that you know it's not good for you, but it's not going to get easier. Stop waiting to be ready and start choosing to be ready because at the end of the day, being ready is a choice. You choose better for yourself. You choose to break these habits. People wait their entire lives saying they'll do it tomorrow. You only have right now. You only have today. 
You are not guaranteed tomorrow. And sometimes that's what you need in order to put yourself back in the perspective of how do I get out of this? How do I expand myself? And those are the questions I really want you to ask yourself when you're thinking of why you want to break this habit and write it down. Another thing I want to talk about is the idea of a dopamine detox. You don't necessarily need a dopamine detox in order to better your life. And what I mean by that is a lot of the times people will set really, really high expectations of themselves and end up failing because at the end of the day, we need dopamine, okay? We need to feel good about ourselves. If we're not feeling good about ourselves, we will easily fall back into the same exact patterns because we're not going to elicit a strong enough positive response for the new habit to form. You can't train your brain into liking hard things. You just need to learn how to choose what type of hard you want because at the end of the day, continuing to do what you're doing is also hard. It's just a different type of hard. You're just used to this type of hard because your brain is chemically bonded to it. Whereas the other type of hard, you know, going to the gym, caring for your body, having clean lungs, breathing air. <laughs> Sorry y'all, I get a little silly, but you get what I'm saying? Like, those things are also equally as hard. It's just choosing what type of hard you want. Your brain is just literally bonded to the type of hard that you've been used to your entire life. I can't promise you that it's gonna be easy. All I can promise is that it'll be better than what you're currently doing. Lastly, I really wanna talk about how to trick your brain into enjoying delayed gratification because I think oftentimes we choose the things that are more instant gratification rather than something that takes a little bit longer and that's one thing that a dopamine detox is a little bit good for but I do think you do need to sprinkle in a little bit of different types of dopamine if you're going on some type of detox. An example of this is habit stacking. If you're going to the gym and you often like to just sit and watch YouTube videos, you can play YouTube videos while you're at the gym. You might be doing that right now while listening to me or while you're doing your laundry you can put on a podcast that you really enjoy listening to. Doing these things have really really helped me because I have ADHD so sometimes it's difficult for me to like really really focus in on one thing and if I have something else playing in the background while I'm doing a task that I don't like to do it almost tricks my brain and allows me to get more into the mode. I kind of get in autopilot and I just do what I need to do and I don't really think much of it. Delayed gratification is just a lot more enjoyable over time than instant gratification. It's kind of like reading a really good book or just reading the spark notes, right? A good book makes you want to go home and and read it. Whereas the spark notes doesn't really give the full story. It doesn't give the details. When you embark on this journey of really breaking your bad habits, I need you to think of it like a really, really long storybook. Give yourself credit, okay? You're not going to be 100% all the time, which is why I don't really necessarily agree with the idea of dopamine detox because oftentimes it takes way too much willpower and it honestly sets you up for failure. The key is this, start breaking your habit by eliciting a negative association with it, introduce the new habit that you want to form, and this might sound weird, but go back to that bad habit one more time to really see how it feels and then jump straight into the new habit because this gives you the option to tell your brain what's negative about the bad habit, right? What do I not like? And honestly, you'll probably go back to the bad habit naturally. <laughs> like, you don't have to have it be a conscious thing. I think it's just something we naturally do because intuitively, I feel like when we're stepping into a new version of ourselves, we sometimes get really scared and we like to retreat back to old ways of being. So naturally, this is gonna happen where you go back to that bad habit one last time and allow that to be the last time. Remember those feelings that you felt when you were within that bad habit because that last time is what really breaks it for good because both things are hard. It's not easy to stay in one spot. It's not easy to have a bad habit and it's not easy to break habits, but it's better to break habits in the long run. Choose your hard and things will get easy. With that being said, you guys, thank you guys so much for tuning into this week's episode of the Improvement for Imbeciles podcast. Be sure to check out all my social medias and like this video and subscribe if you like more self-improvement content. I appreciate every single one of you and you can do it. I genuinely believe in you. I'll see you guys next week.